Hey, this is Bob, and in this video we'll be exploring how we can use mesh tools to create some really nice organically animating procedural geometry scenes. We'll explore the mesh tools objects and how we can non-destructively animate using fields, shaders, textures and noises. So here we are in the picture viewer in Cinema 4D and we're going to have a look at recreating this scene and um, it's really nice. We've got some um, interesting, very interesting kind of geometric shapes going on here, but then they're kind of animating and growing in what feels like an organic way. So those two things next to each other look great. And you can see that we have what looks like an incredibly complex piece of geometry, which then animates in an equally kind of complex way. Uh, but actually this is very quick and easy and simple to set up and animate using mesh tools. So let's shut down that picture viewer. And here we are in a blank scene in Cinema 4D and it's a standard layout. The only thing we've done is we've docked our mesh tools here. So to find them, if you go to the Insidium menu, mesh tools, and then you can click on this button here to um, then have them dock on any part of the interface uh, that you desire. So let's just Undock those, get rid of them. So there we are. So let's bring in our base geometry, which is going to be a primitive torus. Let's hit ND so we can see the lines. And we'll just leave this in the standard settings. Um, let's just perhaps make it slightly thinner. Right. So Mesh Tools is an entirely procedural modeling and animation tool. So this base geometry, this torus will remain editable throughout and it will never be destructively changed. We'll always be able to access it. So what we have to do is make this base geometry a child of one of our Mesh Tools objects. So the first one we're going to look at is what a Mesh Tools inset does. So we'll take our torus and highlight it then hold Alt, and in Cinema 4D, if you have a highlighted object and you hold Alt and click on a new object, it'll automatically make it a child. So with Alt held down, let's click on the inset, and there we are, we've got it as a child. Now nothing has happened. If I switch off and on this inset, there's no change. So let's have a look at why. In our inset object, let's go to the object tab, and you can see that the amount of our inset is set to 0%. But if we just get in close to one of these quad polygons of our base geometry and start increasing this amount, you'll see what happens. Now, if you're used to modeling in Cinema 4D, this is doing what you'd expect an inner extrude to do. This is what our inset does. And if we go right to 100%, it takes it to a point, And now we have effectively a triangulated mesh bring that down to around 50 and there you can see that where once was one quad polygon we now have five quad polygons we can do more we can offset this central polygon and if we pull this out you'll see it offsetting we can offset it by a negative amount say three and now it's offsetting inwards and with all of these settings, we have variation. So if we add 100% variation on the inset amount, you can see that some of them have been inset closer to the middle than others. So that gives nice kind of randomness to our mesh. But for now, we'll put that on zero. Okay, so that's really nice. Let's have a look at how we can animate these effects. At the moment, we have procedurally modelled some more polygons into our mesh, but we can animate that on, should we wish. Now, all of these settings are, as you can see, they're all keyframable. So if we wanted to, we could go to frame zero on our amount. Let's put it down to zero, add a keyframe, go to frame 50, put say 75% at a keyframe and now you'll see that they grow on and there's our insets so we can animate this with keyframes but we can also animate this procedurally so let's just right click on that go to animation delete track 
which will get rid of those keyframes. And instead of doing it via keyframes, let's do it via fields. So we'll go to the fall off tab of our inset object. Let's add a linear field. And now you can see that wherever we have polygons which are not within our linear field, there is no effect of this inset whatsoever. And if they are completely within the field, they have 100% of that inset value, which we've set at 64. And then obviously anywhere in the middle, they will animate from zero to full. Which is pretty cool. So the way in which we'll get some nice random um, animation on this field in our scene is we're going to use a linear field like this and let's use some rotational animation. So we'll go to tags, let's go to the animation tags and we'll put on a vibrate. Let's go to the tag settings. We will enable rotation. Let's give it full rotation on all axes. And we don't need it to rotate quite so manically. Let's put it on, say, 0.2. And if we hit play, what you'll see is we're getting this interesting random animation. And we could maybe put our timeline up to 500 frames. And there we go. So we're getting this interesting effect. If we go back to our inset and add a little bit of offset, let's say 10, and we'd add a bit of variation, say 50%. Uh, and now we're getting this animated inset with an offset value too. Let's for now just put that down to say 30. Okay. And as we said earlier, this is entirely procedural. So if we go to our torus and let's just say add more ring segments, let's put this up to 50 and let's put the pipe segments to say 52. And now look, it's all changed. We've got the same animation, but obviously we have far more polygons and so we have more insets and so it changes it and we can carry on um, editing this base geometry as much as we wish. Let's just return that to default and return that to default 2. Excellent. So we can use fields and we can non-destructively model our base geometry and animate that modeling as well for pretty quick and impressive looking organic animations. So we've already seen that we can take the torus and change the uh, ring segments and the pipe segments and change its settings. But we can also use mesh tools to make changes to that base geometry as well. So let's just switch off our inset object. In fact, let's just take this linear field up and take it um, to the top of our hierarchy and then we'll switch off our inset. We're going to take our torus and we're going to hold alt and we're going to put it inside a dual graph. So let's click it inside a dual graph. Now what dual graph does uh, is it's a couple of things. Basically we can um, kind of retopologize our base geometry using either triangles or using n-gons, which can give us a very different looking mesh. By default, the dual graph um, is actually the dual graph part of it is switched off and we're merely getting a triangulated mesh. Um, so that's just one. If we leave it triangulated and then re-activate um, our inset, this is going to look very different because now the inset is working on triangle polygons, not quads. So already we're getting a very different look. If we hit play, now it's working on these triangles, which looks pretty cool. Let's just switch off the inset. But we can also go to our dual graph. We can activate this dual graph and we can set it to, say, triangles, which gives us a very different triangulated mesh. So then let's switch on our inset. And now again, we're getting a very different look. Switch that off again. And we could go to N-Gons, which gives us this, which then, of course, if we switch on our inset, is again going to give us a very different look. 
So let's just leave it on uh, triangles for now. So we'll go to our dual graph and we'll switch it to triangles and we'll leave it at that. So that's looking really nice. And you can see that with one field and a bit of a change to our torus using our dual graph, we're getting this look, which is already on the way to getting the look of our um, final render. So what more can we do now? Well, what we're able to do further is we can subdivide this mesh, which is going to obviously create more polygons, which creates more detail. So let's have a look at how we might do that. So what we will do is let's again switch off our inset. So we're not um, going to be confused by that. And we'll get I uh, will just dolly in a bit. Let's highlight our dual graph. Hold Alt and we will go to Mesh Tools Subdivider. Let's click on this. Now, by default, what this has done, let's go to our subdivider. It has subdivided our mesh by one. So if you have a look at the mesh and I'm going to switch off the subdivider, there's our kind of base dual graph torus. Switch on the subdivider and now we have loads more polys. If we increase that subdivision to two, now we have more and we can keep going. But here's the cool thing. We can dynamically subdivide this using, well, we could use fall offs like we have um, with our inset animation, but we can also use selection maps. We can use uh, vertex maps and we can use shaders and materials. So let's use a shader to dictate where the subdivision is going to take place. So we'll go to our subdivider, object tab, Let's go to the shader and add a noise. And now you can see, look straight away. So what is happening is where the, the noise is being mapped to the geometry and where the noise is black, there'll be no subdivisions. And where the noise is white, there'll be full subdivisions. And if we go to our subdivider object tab and increase the level of subdivisions, you can see now if we go in, we've got some very heavily subdivided areas some partially subdivided areas and some areas that have no subdivisions whatsoever. And if we wanted to, we could actually animate these subdivisions. If we go to our noise, let's click on the thumbnail here, add some animation speed, say one, hit play. And you can see that those subdi uh, subdivided areas are animating because our noise is animating and the black and white values are changing. So very cool stuff. We don't need any animation for us though, so let's just hit zero on that. Go back to our subdivider. And for now, for, what, what you'll find is as you pump more and more polygons into our objects, obviously the viewport playback performance will decrease because it's having to process hundreds of thousands of, uh, of polygons and points. So what we'll do for now is we're going to leave our subdivision down just to one level to get an idea of how this is looking. And then when it comes to kind of preview render time, we can of course up that to get all of that detail. But now we've got these areas subdivided, let's switch back on our inset and we can hit play. And now we're getting something that's looking a little bit more random, a bit more organic, and we're getting some nice animation. So let's just go to our inset. Let's add um, a little bit more offset so they're pointing out a bit more, basically. Perhaps even go up to 30. That's looking good. And we could add a little bit of variation. So let's hit play again, see how, see what we've got. So we're getting something very interesting looking here. Okay, so the final thing that we're able to do, and we can do this infinitely, is that we can just put more and more objects in here. So let's go, let's just dolly in a little bit to say this point. Let's go to our inset with it highlighted and let's hold Alt. 
and let's add another inset in there. And this inset at the moment, we're not seeing anything because remember, with the new one, we have no amount. Let's increase the amount. And now we're creating even more polygons. And now just let's add a, the tiniest bit of offset just to make these pop out a little. Let's just say one. That's possibly slightly too much. Let's put that down to say 0.5 with some variation, maybe 0.8. Okay, let's dolly out a bit. And then with this new inset, let's um, use an animated field for that one. We can use the same field. So let's just go down to fall off, drag in our linear field. This is the one that we're using within uh, our first inset. And now if we hit play, so you can see that um, our performance has been hit now because we've just created so many more polygons. It's having to do an awful lot of calculations, but we're still getting we're still getting the playback. Uh, we can see what is happening, and now we've got this incredibly detailed growth of our insets over this geometry. So that's looking really nice now. I'm pleased with that. When it comes to render time, we could perhaps go to our subdivider and go to the object tab and we can add one more level of subdivisions, which is taking a little bit of time to process because now we've got so many polygons in our scene. Let's hit N A to hide those lines, but you can see the level of detail we've achieved. Arguably, we probably don't need this much detail for the look that we're going for. But as you can see, at, at, at render time, you can really boost um, that level of detail should you wish. Let's put that back down to one because it's looking pretty nice like this for the time being. All right. So there we have our basic animation. But now we need to start looking at how we can incorporate some spline animation using mesh tools in this scene. So let's just go to window. We'll go back to our picture viewer. So what you can see here is this in the render is we have our base geometry. Now, this is just this part of it is just the base geometry. And you can see it's, just, it's got two materials applied to it. It's got a material applied to the face of our inset. And then the rest of it is this blue color. But if you follow my mouse along here, we actually have some rendered splines on this section here. These gold bits, these are splines. So how do we get those splines? Well, we use uh, mesh tools to do that too. So let's come out of there. So what we're going to do is, let's just move that camera out a bit. And for speed, let's just switch off our subdivider. So we're going to get really good playback. And then let's hit ND so we can see the lines again. So what we can do, we can make a dynamic spline out of all of these lines which we've created with our geometry. So to do that, let's um, select the top object, this inset, hold Alt, and we're going to use Mesh Tools Edge Spline. So let's click on this. Now, by default, we're not actually seeing anything. And that's because we've actually we've got this in Cinema 4D line mode, which is showing us these black lines. And that's actually hiding these new splines that we've created using the object edges. So let's hit NA. Ah, and now you can see we've got these green splines. And if we make all of the objects invisible underneath, you can see that what we have is a dynamic spline made up of the edges of our object. And this, if we hit play, you can see that this is animating with our geometry. So that's really cool. And with edge spline, what we're able to do, if you if you wish, is we're able to to animate this as well. So um, for example, the start growth and end growth by default is set to start at zero, end at 100%. If we bring this down, you can see, look, we can grow this on. So that can be keyframed, obviously. And then we have offset, where we can offset the start and end position. And we can also use shaders and fields 
to dictate where this spline is going to be created. So this is what we're going to do to make sure if we go back to our picture viewer, you can see that in our animation, we have these gold splines, but then as they are offset by our inset, the splines actually disappear. So the way in which we do that is we use a fall off and we just use the inverse of this field. So let's demonstrate what we need to do. Let's duplicate this field and this one we'll call it linear field inverse. And in that field, let's go to the remapping and let's hit invert. And then in our edge spline, We'll go to fall off. We'll drag in our inverted field. And now it's only creating those splines on the areas that aren't being um, offset by these insets because we've inverted it. So if we just make that geometry visible again, you can see that it's working. So where we have got these kind of extruded insets we don't have splines and where we don't have any any of the offset in our insets we do have splines so that's working really well so now all we need to do is if we kind of position our camera somewhere like here let's reactivate our subdivider which is going to give us all of that really nice detail. And now you can see that we're getting something very close to the animation in our final render. So the last thing to look at is how do we access different parts of this mesh, points or polygons? How do we access that to be able to render, say, just these faces. Well, let's explore that because this is a very smart part of this toolkit. So what we will do for now, let's just deactivate edge spline and we'll deactivate this inset. So now we just have one inset. And let's say that we want to be able to make a selection of just these faces. Well, if we go to our inset object, go to the object tab, you can see that we have the ability to hide inner faces and outer faces. This will actually hide the geometry itself. So if we hide the inner faces, watch what happens. Those bits disappear. Let's just dolly in a bit. you can see that this inner face has been hidden. We can hide the outer faces, which are these bits. Let's hit ND so we can see the lines. It'll make it more clear. And now, look, we're hiding the outer faces, and now it's just those inner ones that are visible. But that's not what we want to do. We just want to make a selection. But we are able to isolate these different parts of the mesh. If we go to the Selections tab, here's where we can make a selection. So, for example, if we want to make an inner faces selection, we can select it. And you can see if you follow my mouse up, we go to the inset object. We now have a polygon selection tag. We can view what that looks like on our mesh to help us make sure we've got the right part. If we display selection, let's click this. So now it's made all of those inner faces green. And if we want to, you can check, obviously change that color to help you with that. Uh, we can uh, create an outer faces selection tag. We can display that selection. That's going to be yellow. So this is really useful. We're able to create these selection tags, which we can use at render time. And we can also display exactly what that selection tag is doing 
in our viewport. So now we have this selection tag, we can texture our geometry, dragging in this selection tag to dictate where certain materials and textures will be placed. And this can be done with, with all of the mesh tools, objects, you can create layers and layers of these um, selection tags for incredibly intricate renders. So let's have a go at just um, setting up a couple of materials in here to have a look at how we might do that. And um, first of all, let's just put a light in the scene. And what we'll do is we'll just give ourselves um, a few shadows just to make it look a little bit more interesting. So we'll put this default light here. Let's go to display and we will pick uh, Gorad shading lines so we can see the shadows. Let's go to the light. Let's go to the general tab and we will go to the shadows and give it some soft shadows. And let's we're not seeing those soft shadows yet. So we need to go to options, shadows, which then lets us see them in the viewport. All right. And so now we have got this light, which is kind of lighting the scene and it all looks uh, a little bit more dramatic. All right. So let's have a quick look at our um, our picture viewer beauty render. So what we have here are we have the um, the reflective tips of our offsets are uh, this gold color. We have this base kind of bluish gray color, and then we have our splines which are textured with the same gold color. So the way in which we do that, let's just do that with standard materials, Cinema 4D materials in the viewport. So first of all, we'll double click in our material manager to create a new material. And this one will double click it to then edit it. And in the color, let's just change it to, we're gonna make the kind of like the blue gray color. All right, and we'll drop that on our top inset. Uh, we can actually make that top inset active again, which just gives us a little bit more detail. And maybe look, let's go to the first inset and make the, in the object tab, let's make the offset a bit greater, say 45. All right, so they're sticking up a little bit more now. Very good. And what we need to do now is make our gold material. So we'll double click here in the material manager, double click again, so you can actually edit it in your attributes manager here, but force of habit, um, I'm not sure why, but I always double click the material, which opens up a new material editor window. This is the way I like to uh, work on this. So what we'll do is let's go to, uh, we'll just uh, deactivate the color channel. We'll do it all in reflectance. So in the reflectance channel, we want to add a shiny layer basically. So we'll go to add and we could pick a Beckman or a GGX. Let's pick a GGX. So now um, if we put this material onto our inset, it's now going to ignore the bluish one. We're just seeing the reflective material and that's because the reflective one is to the right. So this is the one that will be active. But however, remember that we made a selection tag on our first inset, which selects just the tips of these insets. So if we go to our reflective material, and drag in that selection into the selection window, you'll see that we are getting the reflective ends, but the base bluish gray material remains. So to make that more obvious, let's give this a gold color. So in the layer color, let's go down to the color editor and add a little bit of gold. Something like that, maybe. OK, so then if we let's go to display and get rid of the lines. So now we've got this gray material and we've got the tips which are gold. Um, another thing that we can do at the moment, obviously, the object that's being referenced for our mesh tools animation is our torus. And because we have made all of these um, all of these uh, various different polygons, some are at different sizes, we're kind of dynamically subdividing. Um, and that means that um, we've got kind of some fong shading that looks a little bit funky. And so for this animation, what we do is just get rid of all of that fong smoothing shading. We don't need it. So to do that, let's look what we can do. We just highlight the fong tag and then just delete it. 
and now we're not getting any smoothing shading whatsoever and it's working better for this animation so there we have our geo with our gold tips and as the fall off works its way through the animation obviously this border with our gold tips moves so then let's do the last bit we'll activate our edge spline now by default we've got our edge spline set to green and remember we're using an inverted fall off so wherever our insets are being offset here it means we haven't got any splines where there is no offset of the inset then we have our um, we have our splines and then they kind of graduate off as they go through the fall off so let's just change that color and let's give it a bit of a gold hint and there we go so we have our animation now of our geometry which animates on we've got the splines which animate on and um, we've got our reflective tips which animate on and off as they make their way and fall through that fall off so if we just go back to our window and our picture viewer you can see that this is exactly how this has been done we've got our moving tips getting colored gold as they make their way through the fall off the splines disappear and then the offset extrudes upwards and it all looks very cool and we've managed to recreate that very quickly with this viewport representation with just a few mesh tools layered up